Hello everyone, my name is Joshua and welcome to Northern Solar. In this month's video we're going to look at April 2023 to see how much we've produced on our solar panels here in Cheshire, how much money we saved and how it compared to last year's production in April. For those of you who didn't see last week's video, I finally completed my first year with solar panels on our house here. So I put a link up to the video here and you can have a look at the whole year of 2022 into 2023 and see how much we saved over the whole year there. But without further ado, let's jump into this month's video. So for those of you that are new to the channel, this is our array here in our, in our house. That's the front of the array. That's four kilowatts on the west facing. There's also four kilowatts on the back of the house, which is east facing. We have eight kilowatts in total, and that goes into our solar edge six kilowatt inverter. And we have 13 kilowatt hours of grow watt battery storage. So this is the production for April 2023. As you can see, an absolutely massively mixed bag. We've got all the way down here, the lowest day we had 8.18 kilowatt hours production on the 5th of April there, and then the highest day 42.7 on the 20th, I think it is there. So yeah, really that's been a mixed bag in April. As you expect, you do get lovely sunny days, and you also get a lot of cloudy rainy days as well. So on average, we were looking at 24.97 and a total for April of 749. So not too bad overall in terms of a total, but when you compare that to last year in April 2022, actually slightly lower this year. So 812 kilowatt hours last April and only 749 kilowatt hours in 2023. So yeah, as you can see, slightly lower, but still within the sort of range to be expected for April. Um, hopefully, May started pretty well. We might see slightly higher than May last year, but we'll have to see how we get on there. But yeah, so far this year, tracking upwards from January seems to be following the curve as expected. So I picked a random day in April. This is quite a good day. 20th of April was a really, really high production day. Just a big sort of cloudy gap around lunchtime, but generally a nice early start around 6 a.m. and then peaking at over five kilowatts around lunchtime and then just finishing around 8 p.m. in the evening. So if you look at that, that's just the production. If we look at the next graph, it shows our consumption from the grid, from the batteries and everything. So I'll go into a bit of detail here. The green block is the battery state of charge. So as you can see, it was probably quite a nice day on the 19th as well. So there's plenty of battery left, about 90% battery you start in at midnight. So the battery's not really discharging at all overnight because we have the car set to charge in our four hour window. So this big red block is the car charging. So the battery doesn't discharge to charge the car. What you'll see here is these blue blocks are the um, consumption in the house. So we've got a, this is the hot water. So at the moment we haven't quite got our eddy installed yet, but at the moment we do have hot water heated in a tank by the immersion heater rather than the gas. So this is um, the hot water coming back on to heat the hot water after a shower. So you can see in the morning the um, battery takes care of that because the sun hasn't come up. But as soon as the sun comes up here, we're starting to use more electricity in the house. We've got uh, maybe another shower. We've got breakfast being made, washing machines, dishwashers, all that sort of stuff happening. So you can see the solar production going up here and this blue block is the export to the grid. So the battery's full fairly early on in the morning, maybe 9 a.m. I think the battery's full around then. So it starts to export to the grid. And then we're using some of that power for various things in the house. And then as you can see, there's cloudy spell during the day um, still enough solar to cover all the usage all the way through and then again in the afternoon very little usage so all going out to the grid until the sun comes down and then just around sort of 6.30, 7 o'clock sun starts to come down so then the battery starts to help power the loads in the evening. So yeah that's obviously quite a, a good day we haven't really used very much battery the sun's taking care of most of it and we've exported quite a lot to the grid which uh, obviously we get paid for on the SEG tariff. We are trying to um, Get our eddy installed as part of the renovation work we're doing currently and hope that will mean that the exports to the grid will be less because the water will heat when it's got excess solar rather than drawing from the battery so um, at that time of the day so hopefully once that's installed we'll start to see a little bit of an improvement in our consumption rather than um, consuming from the battery at those times uh, so that's pretty typical for this month. Um, solar production figures for April 2023 breakdown of usage and consumption so as we saw, 749 kilowatt hours produced. We exported 470 of them, which is quite surprising actually. I thought we would export less, I thought we'd be able to use more than that. 
which means that we only consume 279 of our produced solar um, solar kilowatt hours. We used 349 from the grid, um, and as we've seen in previous months, a lot of that, almost all of that usage is off peak. Just 7.1 kilowatt hours of peak grid usage during the day uh, during the days across April. And that's the sort of balancing load. It's what the Halley inverter measures um, battery usage, grid usage, consumption, and everything. There's always like a bit of a trickle. Um, so seven is about normal. Some some months it's been higher when we've, we've done other things during the day. Used more higher power um, appliances during the day, which is more than what our inverter can give us. So uh, from the solar and the batteries, so that we're then. It has to draw from the grid to, to meet that demand, but in April, 7.1 kilowatt hours of peak usage is nice, really nice and low. The off-peak usage, 342, um, almost all of that is the car. I don't think we did. I don't think we've done any. I think the battery has been not not charged up overnight. We've had enough sun every day to make sure we've got enough battery power to last through the night and through the day. So we've not had to add any charge into the battery, which we were doing through winter. April's been sunny enough that we don't have to add grid charge into the battery overnight. So almost all of that is to power the Zoe EV and the plug-in hybrid as well. Um, so our total consumption in the house for April, including the car charging, is 628.3 kilowatt hours. Um, so yeah, we, we were a net exporter really. We generated more than we needed, so we exported that difference out to the grid. Um, so in terms of financials, that's the standard charge is same either, either with or without solar would have been £14.19. pence. Our cost for our total grid usage of 349 kilowatt hours was just £28.66 pence because again almost all of that is on our off-peak tariff at 7.5 pence per unit overnight. We earned £19.27 in terms of export payments for our SEG tariff at just over 4 pence per unit. Uh, which meant our net electricity cost for April 2023 was £23.58. Based on our assumptions, um, the price of that month's electricity without the solar panels would have been £148.75. So our monthly savings of £125.16. So I'm going to compare that later to April 2023 because in April 20, uh, sorry, April 2022, because last year we had the solar but we didn't have the battery, we we're still waiting for it to be delivered. So we'll get a really good comparison. Our usage patterns have changed a little bit, but we'll have a good comparison shortly of how much difference having the battery makes in terms of savings. So we'll just go down here and complete these ones. So our solar breakdown, we exported 62%, or 63% say of what we generated, and we only consumed 37%. So something still to work on, still trying to um, use more of it in the house, but at the moment we've not really had the heating on, it's not been warm enough to need any air conditioning or anything like that, and also, we're not doing an awful lot of cooking and things in the house because currently we don't actually have a kitchen. <laughs> we're working with a, an air fryer and a microwave and that's about it at the moment. So um, once the kitchen's up and running finally, hopefully by the end of May, we will probably be back to our normal usage patterns after that. Um, so yeah, the total usage breakdown, you can see here, 44% of our entire usage for the month was covered by the solar. And uh, that includes the batteries as well. And then off-peak grid usage was 54% which was charging the car and our peak time grid usage is only 1.13% of our total consumption which is really great to see as I see a really small fraction of peak time grid usage which just helps keep your cost down as much as possible. So this is uh, the month to month that I've been doing since the start. I did go into this in more detail in my annual video so I won't go into too much detail. If you want to watch the annual video there'll be a link in the description or just click on the channel. Um, so the picture here um, looks the same as what we had before. You can see the month, the same data here was as we looked at the monthly one there, and then comparing it to last month, we'll put on another slide. But the total of 125 pounds and 16 pence, adding that to our previous uh, cumulative total, our total savings so far of 1,622 pounds and 55 pence since we've had the system installed. Uh, all of this information is available on a link in the description on, a, on the spreadsheet. You can download your own copy of the spreadsheet, you have a look at all the data and how it all works if you're interested, or just drop me a question in the comments if you have any specific questions about it. So this is the direct comparison with April 2022, because in April 2022 we had panels only, no battery. So the production was higher last month, as we saw earlier. Um, we exported more um, because the production was higher and we used less of it. 
we weren't able, we didn't have a battery, so we weren't able to store any of it. So you, as you can see, the difference in consumption is um, in self consumption is massive. Like the, we exported a lot more because we weren't able to use it, and the total consumption in the house is higher now because we have the electric car. So if the if you ignore the uh, off peak um, car charging, say if we were doing the same amount at seventy odd. Um, off-peak usage it would all be in the battery now so it'd be much cheaper and you, the massive difference as well here is the peak time grid usage only seven kilowatt hours in April 2023 and 113.7 kilowatt hours in April 2022 so having the battery has saved us over a hundred kilowatt hours of peak time grid usage which relates down to if you scrub all the way down to the bottom the difference in cost savings is, over, is around 40 pounds difference just by having the batteries in April. Um, for me that it's been fantastic to see this because the first month I was when we had this all I was a bit annoyed that we didn't have the battery but it does now give us a good comparison to just how much difference it makes in the bills if you have a battery. Um, obviously everyone's usage patterns are different, our usage patterns have changed since last year we've got an extra EV now so we are consuming a lot more off-grid. Um, if we were doing it the same way the, the Savings would possibly even be higher because we wouldn't be using as much to charge the car. But yeah, overall, you can see here the, the amount of peak time grid usage that's avoided by having a battery is massive. Right, so next slide. This is the payback calculation. It's the same one that I've been using uh, all the way through. I've made a few tweaks, but this is essentially how I'm assuming the payback period will go for our uh, system. Um, all the assumptions are listed here. Um, we know that I, uh, based on all the terms, the first year savings based on the whole year was £1,495 approximately, um, which means that based on inflation factors and all that sort of stuff and um, how much we think the panels are going to generate, we know how much they generated this year and they will continue to generate similar amounts each year to year. The payback period um, from the initial system cost of £15,215.50 pence the cumulative savings hit that in year eight. So somewhere between year seven and eight, we should have finished paying for this system. Uh, and then the long-term benefit after that of having the panels and, and should eventually lead us, who knows what electricity prices are gonna be like in 25 years, but around 90,000 pounds better off with the solar over that time. And again, these calculations are based on a set of assumptions that are essentially putting your finger in the air. Um, so it's hard to be very accurate with those. The things we can be certain about is we do know what we're going to produce because we've had it for a year now and the, realistically the production is going to be very similar year to year. So that means we do know what we're going to produce. We do have a very good idea of how much we're going to use. We're probably going to use more this year because we've got the two EVs, but the EV only really charges overnight from the grid anyway, so it doesn't really affect the solar payback too much. Um, but yeah, uh, if you're interested, this is also in the spreadsheet on the link in the description. So the Renault Zoe, um, this month we did 780 miles, an average of 4.3 miles per kilowatt hour, which at 7.5 pence um, for a total of 181.4 kilowatt hours meant a total cost of £13.60 pence for those 780 miles driven, which works out at 1.7 pence per mile, which to be honest is just staggering. I'm, I still can't get my head around just how cheap it is to run this car. If you are assuming a 40 mile per hour uh, per mile per gallon petrol equivalent at £1.47 pence per litre, that would have cost £130.10. So just in April, fuel savings of £116.50, which is just fantastic. I get a lot of comments and ask questions about do I take into account the running costs of the car, servicing costs, insurance costs and all that sort of stuff. And Generally, I've, I've only had the car a few months, so I haven't taken all that into account yet. It might be something I can look at on the longer term, but even if you're just looking at fuel costs, the savings are huge for the, if you're doing this amount of miles and you're able to charge with an off-peak tariff. Um, so yeah, really happy with how that's going so far. What I like to do at the end of these videos is a little plug for myself. If anybody is considering switching to Octopus for a smart tariff or for any, any tariff in particular, if you want to uh, use my um, referral link, which is in the description as well, you'll get £50 credit on your bill and I'll get £50 credit on my bill. A massive thank you to those who have used the link. It's been really great to get extra credit on the bill to help pay for the electricity that we use and help for the gas usage through the winter as well. 
Um, so yeah, massive thank you to those who've already used it. Um, link in the description if you need it. So that's pretty much it for this month. Um, I was hoping to have more information for the My Energy Eddy, which is still in its box. We haven't had all the electrics fully installed yet for the extension work going on downstairs, so I'll have to wait till maybe the end of May before that gets put in. Um, slow progress on the housework, but yeah, really looking forward to getting it all put in and having another um, way of saving money off the heating, uh, the hot water. Um, so yeah, as ever, absolutely um, great results for the uh, savings. Uh, as we keep asking the question, are solar panels worth it? Again, always, as always, yes, most definitely, in our case, they are. If there you have any questions or you've got any comments, please drop them in the box below. I do like answering them, and if you're considering getting solar, I'm um, happy to give you some uh, pointers. Uh, if you're nervous about east-west, like our house is east-west split, you're not, we're not, um, not too clued up on how that's going to work in terms of production, you can look at all of our data from the last year to see what year, what you might expect month to month based on our system here. Um, I do have a video um, going into more detail into the system, how it's all set up, how it works, how the apps work, everything like that. But that's pretty much it for this month. Uh, hopefully next month I'll have some more uh, sunny days and we'll start seeing uh, higher production figures and even more savings. But yeah, thanks very much everybody. See you next time.